It has often been observed that one of the greatest potential casualties of modern industrialized urbanized society is the very autonomy and agency of human beings. While our ancestors might have had greater options to live each day how they pleased, as long as the crops came in and the flocks stayed tended, many modern urban humans are seemingly confined to an existence lived inside bland, indistinguishable houses and apartments and generic vanilla offices bridged by infuriating commutes in near identical metal boxes on wheels. But maybe, just maybe, a blockchain like Cardano can preserve and even bring back some measure of autonomy and agency that modern life seems to diminish. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss the AMAs from Charles being back, this first one from Mongolia, some new Pavia footage, the MuesliSwap Hungry Cows NFT drop, and some rewards from Virtua for early minters. If your idea of a good time is a yurt and a dirt bike, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. It was a good weekend. The AMAs from Charles are finally back and they kicked off from Mongolia. I'm not going to lie. Charles almost looks most happy when he's in Mongolia. Look at this picture. If that is not a happy man holding a bow, I have no idea what is. This is a very happy version of Charles. And it, it, I think it brought out some, some interesting things. It caused him to discuss, I think, uh, an idea that's central to the ethos of Cardano. And this was maybe the best um, the best expression of of that idea that I've heard I've heard anybody sort of lay down so concisely. So it sounds like Charles has been hanging out with nomadic peoples as well as at the presidential palace with the US ambassador to Mongolia. He hung out with the Mongolian rock band, The Who, who he's mentioned before, that's HU, not any other type of Who, Who, The Who. IOG apparently is really in Mongolia right now because they did a prior remote Haskell course in Mongolia, but it was during the situation with the illness that shall not be named. And now they're back to hold the actual graduation because all of the restrictions due to the unnamed illness are lifted now and they can actually go there and do a live in-person graduation. So Charles talked at length in this AMA about what a blockchain like Cardano can do for economic identity in a nation state like Mongolia. He doesn't like the term financial inclusion. And I think if you've paid attention to any, any amount of mainstream media in the Western world over the last few years, you've heard this, this label, this idea thrown around, sort of bandied about with reckless abandon lately. It's sort of like the latest flag to fly that you are in favor of financial inclusion. But Charles has kind of an interesting analysis of this. He doesn't like that term since it implies you are welcome to be a part of my system, but that might remove agency and autonomy from people since they have to join what we already have. Instead, he likes economic identity or economic agency. To Charles, those terms are about equality, but also about allowing you to live the life you want, where and how you want, while still giving you access to financial markets. He cited the case of the Kazakh eagle hunters in Mongolia. You've probably seen the photos of people on horseback with these majestic, gigantic golden eagles out hunting on the steppe. These are the people we're talking about. He says the magic of what Cardano can do is giving people like this autonomy and agency so that they can access the global economy, but still allowing them to continue living their nomadic lifestyle if they choose. Let's face it, for many of us, if we had the choice tomorrow of jumping in a mid-sized sedan to commute to a boring office, or jumping on a horse with a giant golden eagle to go hunt on the steppe, we're jumping on that horse. 
Charles believes there's a path to this place where people can have access to global financial markets but still live their lives the way they want. It's real fi and it has levels. Level one is building infrastructure in the form of telecommunications, energy, and computing. He says this all has to be decentralized since if any one actor can turn these things off, crypto and digital identity don't even matter since one party could restrict access. Level two involves identity, which requires two subparts, verification and reputation. This would be verification of claims like, I went to this school and got this degree, which is a sort of binary yes or no thing. Reputation is not binary. It's a value judgment like how reliable or trustworthy is this person. Level three relates to the actual applications like peer-to-peer -peer lending, marketplaces, oracles, and stable coins. Charles says they're keeping one foot in Mongolia since it's a great place for innovation with great cellular providers and entrepreneurs with great internet connectivity on one end, while one third of the country is still nomadic on the other end. I think this is an interesting topic that no one, no one really ever discusses the implications. So financial inclusion is certainly all the rage, but nobody talks about what that's actually going to entail. Maybe the Kazakh eagle hunters like eagle hunting. <laughs> Maybe they don't want to ride back and forth to work in a mid-sized sedan. Maybe they don't want to sit in gridlock on highways trying to go from a bland, nondescript house to a bland, nondescript office. Maybe they would much prefer to go out hunting with golden eagles on horseback or ride dirt bikes and live in yurts. Maybe they don't want to change their lifestyle at all to conform and mold themselves to be included financially in this other system that's already been created by us. Maybe they'd prefer to just continue living their lives exactly how they want, but also have access to the global economic systems. I think this is an important distinction that uh, most people never get to, so I'm glad to hear Charles talking about this. Certainly, it's not for me or anybody else to say what any particular group of people might want for themselves, but it does seem like there's some truth that when you're included in a system, you're also often forced to conform to the norms of that system, and there's some loss of autonomy and agency. So it seems like there is some value to be gained by creating access to the global financial markets without forcing the participants in the markets to lose that autonomy and agency. If Cardano can accomplish that, that's a pretty big use case. Moving from the real world and real fi to the metaverse and virtual life, we're starting to see some bigger glimpses of a lot of these Cardano metaverses, including Pavia, which was really the first big Cardano metaverse that announced itself as such and you know appears to be going down that road to become uh, a metaverse where we can go in and you know mingle and socialize and do all the things we imagine doing in a metaverse so we, we're starting to get wider glimpses of what pavia is building and we've only seen a few things we haven't seen you know a ton of of footage of what their virtual world might end up looking like but this weekend, we did get a look at the entrance to the stadium. You probably know on the Pavia map, there are certain features, and we kind of know what some of them are, and we don't really know what others of them are. So the stadium is one of those features we do know about. We know it's a stadium, but we didn't really have a good idea of what it looked like. Pavia had sort of like a, a little sneak peek that was, uh, that was a little mysterious earlier. Uh, some time ago, they gave us um, a little sneak peek at something, and we couldn't really tell what it was. I believe it was actually the doors to the stadium that we can see here, but people were guessing it was like a hangar for aircraft, a spaceport, a garage. Turned out it was this entrance to the stadium. They're also hinting that I think next month in August, we're going to start seeing the first glimpses of the uh, Pavia Central Plaza, which is the largest of these features on the map. I think that's going to be a big watershed moment for Pavia. Either people are going to be pleased with what they're seeing, because that might be the first really big glimpse at what's been built. 
either the community and you and potential users of Pavia are going to be pleased with that or they'll be underwhelmed. But I think either way, it's going to be pretty exciting for us on the sidelines to kind of watch this going down and see, finally get to see what Pavia has built. We also got some more details on this big NFT drop from Muesli Swap. We talked about this a few episodes ago. These are going to be functional NFTs and just like in a lot of the cases we've seen in the DeFi world, when they release NFTs, it's usually about some kind of a boost to some yield. That's the case here. But now we're getting a better look at a few uh, different examples of the NFTs. Um, I think previous to this, we'd seen sort of one background and sort of one NFT. And now we're kind of seeing what the uh, different traits and rarities are looking like. Uh they're letting us know there's going to be different cows, different gadgets like sunglasses, different hats, different backgrounds. Uh, there's going to be 10,000 of these NFTs. And there's some detail to the timing of the release. Muesli Swap also dropped this Medium article where they let us know how, how, the, how the sequence of events on Mint Day are actually going to go. So we knew there was going to be a white listing for people who had staked uh milk to the muesli swap milk pools and it looks like the deadline to get on that white list was 5 p.m on the 17th of july and on the day of the mint which will be the 18th of july they'll start accepting funds two hours before the mint actually starts so that'll be 3 p.m utc on the 18th at 5 p.m utc when minting begins they will start processing the minting requests received if there have been more than 2500 requests for hungry cow nfts by 5 p.m utc they'll pick requests randomly and return the remaining funds if there have been less than 2500 requests all those requests will be fulfilled at 5 p.m utc and from then on further requests will be fulfilled on a first come first serve basis if I had to guess based on how these uh, types of NFT mints have gone for uh, for projects as big as Music Swap in the past, I would guess that we might see pretty heavy demand, pretty heavy demand for this. Um, so what's interesting, at the end of this article, they mentioned that there could be a drop size adjustment. They say the total number of Hungry Cow NFTs is 10,000. Initially, we announced that drop one will include 2,500 hung hungry cow NFTs, while drop two will include the remaining 7,500 NFTs. Due to the vast interest in the past few days, we might consider increasing drop size one to up to 5,000 NFTs while reducing drop size two accordingly. The drop size adjustment will be announced on the minting day if it should take effect. This is no surprise to me that they've seen more interest than maybe they had anticipated. I think that's been the trend with big projects in Cardano. There's pretty much always been more demand than they initially anticipated. I think there are a lot of reasons for that, which we have covered ad nauseum on this channel. But once again, it's good to be in Cardano. A lot of people looking at this mint uh, may have overlooked this page in the Muesli Swap uh, docs section. So there's an NFT page that talks about these hungry cow NFTs and it gives a formula for the yield boost that owners of these NFTs uh, might experience. We've covered in the past that the uh, boost will be between 10% and 90% on yield farming positions, but they have this really detailed breakdown of all the different traits of the NFTs and the boosting contributor factor which you can see uh which you can see up here in this formula for the boost factor so they break down every single thing from the background to sort of the mood of the cow or whether it's golden or cardano or not the hats it might be wearing what it's holding in its hand what the table looks like and of course the muesli bowl and the contents of the muesli bowl Unless it's somehow included right in the NFT, I'm guessing that immediately after the mint, we'll see a large number of people sort of scrambling to calculate their exact boost factor based on this table.
Finally, it looks like Virtua is following through on its promise to reward us early minters with two things. So the first is this. They say, here's a sneak peek at our free special rewards for Cardano Island OGs is our way of saying thank you. OGs who minted land or condos on Thursday, the 7th of July, will get one exclusive rare Cardano V-Flect in a blue t-shirt. And they look like this. The second reward is this. They say, we're still not done with our Cardano Island OG rewards. Check out these amazing Nitro League cars. OGs who minted land on Thursday, the 7th of July will also get an exclusive metallic green Cardano special edition car. There it is right there, apparently. I hope everybody is starting out a great week and I will talk to you tomorrow.